And we're back here now and in focus. Joining the discussion is Cade Crowder of Intangible Resources. Also here is Jason Finkelman, an immigration attorney. Thank you both so much for coming by and Jason for coming back again here thank in you focus. For having me. Yeah, thank you for having sure, me. Sure, definitely. So we were just talking to Representative Workman about that construction worker shortage. So when you hear that there are hundreds of thousands of workers short right now, what's your reaction to that? I think there's two factors that come into play there. One factor is that we've had a shortage going on for years now. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, master plumber in Texas is 58 years old and a master electrician is 55. You have to have your master's license to even own your own company. So once they start to retire, we're going to have a shortage there and avoid in the construction workforce. On top of that, the influx of work from flooding that's happened in Wembley, San Marcos area, and now the devastation that's happened in Houston, Port Arthur, Beaumont area, it's just caused an increase and with the have a decrease of workforce with the influx of work coming on. And could you explain what type of work you do and how busy y'all have been recently? So I specialize in flood uh, remediation and remodeling and uh, right now we're we're finishing up most of the things in San Marcos and Wembley which happened two plus years ago and we're still finishing up things there and now we're up in the Houston, Port Arthur, Beaumont area trying to get an influx there and most people right there, are, they're displaced out of their homes right now. They're waiting on contractors up to a year out before they can ever even start their project, wow. let alone finish it. So you're looking at two years before they can ever get back in their homes again, get their life going, get things started. That's so, tough. Mm -hmm. And Jason, you know, some immigration experts estimate that about 50% of Texas's construction workforce is undocumented. Um, do you think that's true, an accurate number? Uh, I don't know exactly if it's 50%, but it's, it's a very, very high number. Um, and, and to sort of put it all into context, you, you've got um, you know, SB4, which uh, requires local police officers to engage in, in immigration enforcement issues. Um, and so what's happening is local police uh, um, under SB4 are allowed to inquire about a person's uh, immigration status if there's reason to believe that person's undocumented. And then you've got in Texas, like you were saying, large uh, uh, construction workforces that are here um, comprising of undocumented workers. Um, and so you've got a, a big issue with those people mm -hmm. who are now fearful uh, due to SB4 to actually go and show up to work um, because of, of fear of being deported based on their employment. And yeah. so um, um, there's a big issue with that now of, of those undocumented immigrants um, working in those industries, whether it be construction or um, hospitality or agriculture, um, because of SB4 and what's going on with that. And so have folks reached out to you and said, I'm concerned about entering the workforce for that reason? Or? Yeah, so uh, especially local employers um, are, are, are telling me they're seeing massive numbers of their employees um, who may be here undocumented leaving the state of Texas. And it's having a dramatic impact not only on their businesses, but on the Texas economy. You're seeing um, it dramatically impact Hurricane Harvey recovery efforts. You're seeing increased labor costs. You're seeing rising home prices um, and, and hundreds of millions in lost tax revenue. And so employers are, are calling and saying this is a major crisis uh, uh, for their businesses in order to, to keep going. I mean, could you explain just how crucial having these workers is, you know, from, from your perspective, how hard is it to get a project done if you don't have the people that you need for it? It's extremely, it makes it extremely difficult because, it, I mean, it throws off everything, your scheduling, everything like that. And it's not just workers, there's material shortages also that have effect because those same people work in the material houses to get things out and get things ready, the mill houses, things of that nature. And right now you're looking at two to three months out most of the trade bases in the area of Hurricane Harvey that was affected. And we just need more help out there, to be honest. Wow. Now, the Texas Association of Builders also says that we need comprehensive immigration reform, of course, at the federal level to truly fix this. But with all that Congress has on their plate with needing a DACA fix, is that possible? Uh, I, I think it's possible and I think it's critical. Um, you've got about 1.1 million undocumented workers, which comprise about eight and a half percent of the total labor force here in Texas. And so when you have so many people who are fearful of SB4 to go to work and are now leaving the state of Texas, employers, especially in these industries, are calling on Congress to enact some type of immigration reform because by and large, they're having a difficult time finding American workers to take on these positions. So 
uh, people in these industries are saying, Congress, there needs to be some type of immigration reform to allow uh, foreign labor to enter the market based on labor market demands um, to fill this shortage so we don't have a crisis here in Texas. So. Um, it, it, there's a push right now for it, and, and hopefully Congress sees the writing on the wall that this is, is critical to, to the longevity and success of, of all of us here in Texas. Do you think that would come with a DACA fix at the same time? It's, it's hard to say. There's so many different immigration issues out there, mm -hmm. from DACA to the undocumented issue here to even legal and lawful pathways for high-skilled immigrants or foreign investors. Um, there's so many parts at play and it's a very delicate system. In general, we just need comprehensive immigration reform. You're a young person yourself working in the construction industry, but we were just chatting about earlier how, you know, a lot of young folks aren't uh, joining the trades. How do we solve that? I think we just have this perceived perception that you have to go to college, you have to get a degree, you have to do things, but what a lot of people don't realize is that a licensed electrician and electrician and plumber make the same amount as somebody who's coming out with a bachelor's degree in most any study. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, we need more trade-based schools, we need to allow some type of reform that may allow migrant workers to come and actually receive their license if they've worked in an industry long enough to allow them the capability to betterment their life also. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be a good start to everything. All right. Anything else you both would like to add? Or? No, I think a, a, a comprehensive immigration reform, I think, is, is critical for, for um, the construction industry, for the, the uh, success and thriving economy here in, sure. in Texas. Sure. All right. Well, thank you both so much, Jason and yeah, Kate, for coming by today. We appreciate it. And coming up, we'll talk about how the strong job market is impacting small businesses. We'll be joined by groups that support small businesses in both Austin and San Antonio. That's right after this break.